how to get pregnant, what do you need to know? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I am a board certified OBGYN and REI. That means I am a fertility doctor. And every day I talk to people who are having trouble getting pregnant. And what I'm struck with all the time is just how much information there is that people just do not know. So if you are looking to get pregnant or you're just starting, this is the video for you. So I'm going to quickly go over what I wish it was that I knew everybody knew before they started trying to get pregnant. A few housekeeping items. Number one, subscribe to the channel. We are growing. We're over 100,000 strong. And this just helps get more fertility education to more people so you can understand how your body works. Number two, I'm really excited to announce that the As A Woman podcast is coming to YouTube. So this podcast has been out for five years. It has over 2 million downloads. It is long form audio content. I have over 180, that's outrageous, episodes. And they're just audio, but we are going to be putting them on the As A Woman podcast channel so that you could put it in a back browser and listen to it while you're doing other things. And so it's gonna be great to go and search. So subscribe to that channel too, or go check it out. That way you can learn more about it because if you're looking for a specific disease or video or topic, that might be a great way for you to hear some more detailed information. Most episodes are 20 to 40 minutes long. All right, but let's dive into the topic at hand. Number one, your period is a vital sign. So I find out very often that people will be trying to get pregnant for six months, a year, or two years, but their periods were irregular this whole time. So you need to go see a doctor if your periods are not regular. And we define regular as a couple things. Number one, coming around the same time every month. So you can have a few days variability, but it should not vary by more than a week of when you think it is coming. Really, it shouldn't vary by more than like three days of when you think it's coming. In general, people can have normal periods that can be as short as like 23, 24 days or as long as like 35 days. But for you, it should only vary for a few days. So if it's 23 days, then 35 days, then 22 days, then 29 days, then 37 days, that's what I call irregularly irregular and that's not normal. There are a lot of different things that can cause irregular periods. PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, thyroid disease, prolactin abnormalities, also things like functional hypothalamic amenorrhea, which to its extreme point, you have no periods, but there's some minor hypothalamic dysfunction that can cause you to not have a regular period. And sometimes we see this with chronic illness or stress or exercise or caloric reduction. So there's sometimes signs, but a lot of these things you can't rule out until you go and check. And in addition to hormonal things, sometimes abnormal bleeding patterns can be like endometrial polyps or fibroids, things that might make it harder for you to get pregnant. So your period is a vital sign. If it's not coming regularly and predictably, you should get that checked out because you might not be having the most optimal time capturing or detecting ovulation. Number two, if your period is abnormal, still under the, I guess, periods of vital sign. But in addition to coming regularly, if it's extremely heavy, bleeding through your clothes, or very painful, those are concerning as well. Number one, bleeding through your clothes, concerning for fibroids. Number two, very painful, concerning for endometriosis. These are also things that can impact your ability to get pregnant. So I want you to find a gynecologist who you trust, who you like, who doesn't gaslight you, that communicates, who can investigate to make sure that they don't see any problems. You can call this a preconception visit. Hey, I like to schedule a preconception visit with my OBGYN. They will talk through any issues you have, talk to you about trying to get pregnant, do some preconception testing. That's, they love that visit, that visit's fantastic. Trying to shove all those visits into an annual exam, which is very short, is tough. When you go for a problem-focused visit, it's actually gonna be easier for them to give you the time you need. Okay, so you have all these period abnormalities. If you have them, you need to get those checked out. Okay, so let's say that's checked out, it's fine, or your periods are perfectly regular. Now what? We need to know when you're ovulating. A lot of people use an app, and I mean, I like an app, or your Apple Watch or your phone, a lot of these can track as well. But 
sometimes they are not accurate. Data in, data out. So if you're going to use them, you have to be very rigorous about putting your information in. Remember that all apps are using the calendar method. Now, wearables actually can use some body temperature functions, so slightly different, but all apps are using the calendar method. The calendar method takes the length of cycles as you give it, subtracts 14 days and calls that ovulation day, and then says your fertile window is the five days ending on ovulation and says have sex during this time, and, and that's fine. And if your periods are regular, that is likely to be accurate. Second way you can track ovulation could be through ovulation predictor kits, and I do have a whole video on that. That's a urinary-based test where you pee on the stick, and it tells you if you're ovulating based on the LH surge. And the important thing to remember is the day of the surge is the day before ovulation. So you'd really like to target those two days to have sex. You can also check your cervical mucus, your body, get comfortable with it, put your fingers in, pull mucus out, stretch it, and when it looks like egg white, that's your type four or your most fertile mucus. And so you'd wanna target that day. That's from high estrogen levels. And then another way is what wearables do is they look for your temperature shift, which happens after you ovulate. So it doesn't help you in this cycle, but it can help you identify I did ovulate and that might help you in future cycles. You can also not do that. So having sex every other day will help you target when you're ovulating or having intercourse approximately every other day from cycle day 10 to 20 hits it for the vast majority of people or for the two weeks after your period ends. So there's different ways that you can decide how much you wanna track or how much data you want versus how stressed out you are. But knowing when you're ovulating is going to be helpful. Next is going to be to know that as long as you're having intercourse, none of the other stuff matters, meaning you can go pee right away, there's no correct position, you don't have to keep your legs in the air afterward, those are all Miss or wives' tails. Sperm rapidly moves through the female reproductive tract to find the egg. It is very attractive to the egg. So go pee, don't get a urinary tract infection, and don't lay in some funky position, and don't be tricked into making the intercourse experience of trying to get pregnant less enjoyable based on a position or a wives' tail. So as long as you're getting the job done, then that is totally fine. Of note, sperm can live for five days. The egg lives for 24 hours. So that's why a lot of apps will say this fertile window starts well before you know you're ovulating because they'd like you to get some sperm there because the egg is so short living. All right, I also want you to be prepared for what some of the symptoms and signs are and then also getting your body ready. So when you've ovulated, your body starts to make progesterone. Progesterone rises and falls throughout the entire luteal phase, and that's very normal. It is stimulated by LH from the brain. However, when a pregnancy comes to implant, which is typically seven to nine days after ovulation, you are now going to have HCG from the pregnancy stimulate a constant progesterone production, and now you're going to feel different. Most people will. Confusingly, some of those symptoms are very similar to what it's like just from having high progesterone levels. And if you haven't had high progesterone or you're sensitive to it, this just may be what you feel like in the luteal phase. But some of those symptoms from higher progesterone can include really tender or sore breasts, an increased sense of smell or aversions to smells, aversions to food, feeling nauseous, having a loss of appetite, feeling fatigued, so tired, or having some brain fog, what people call Pregnancy brain is from that progesterone. And so those can be some of the signs you see in that time period. You can also have some implantation spotting. So definitely people might have spotting and say, that's it, I know I'm not pregnant. But remember, implantation is an embryo eating away at the wall of the uterus. And so it's growing in to make that placental connection. So having some implantation spotting, it can be normal. So when do you take a pregnancy test? Officially, the best time to take a pregnancy test is going to be about two weeks after you think you ovulated. So approximately when you would miss your next period. Now, how early can you take the test is typically about a week after ovulation. If it's negative, it might not mean that you're not pregnant, but that's typically the earliest you could usually detect even a very faint line. Remember that over-the-counter pregnancy test, they're detecting the pregnancy hormone in your urine, how dilute or concentrated your urine is matters, and 
how much hormone there is matters. So it should get darker as the days go on. And it might be super faint, just depends on the brand. So the type of test is setting a detection limit. So the ones that are early or first, and they'll tell you on the box, they have a lower level of pregnancy hormone so they can detect earlier. They also cost more money so you do not have to go down that road. Another thing to think about is just what I want you to do before you get pregnant. Please be taking a prenatal vitamin with folic acid. Folic acid prevents special types of birth defects called neural tube defects that includes anencephaly, lack of brain structure, and then spinal cord defects. Folic acid is the only form that's proven to help. Will methylated folate, which is in a lot of designer prenatals, can it prevent it too? I mean, probably. However, we don't know that. And it's unlikely we're going to get a study to tell us that because nobody's going to do a non-inferiority study and they're going to take somebody off of standard of care treatment for a birth defect to see if something else also prevents a birth defect. We're never going to have that study. I do not love designer prenatals having methylated folate and no folic acid. Personally, when my patients take those, I make them buy a separate folic acid pill. I just do. So I'd rather you find one that just has folic acid in it, even if it's not as fancy or nice as some of your designer prenatals. I also want you to be considering taking care of your body, limiting exposure to toxins when you can. So like plastics and Teflon, looking at the chemicals in your world, not smoking and not drinking or, or limiting alcohol, not using marijuana. I want you to be eating healthy, giving that body lots of nourishment so it can get pregnant. Fruits, veggies, whole grains, sugars occasionally but remember those processed foods also have a lot of chemicals and hormones in them and that can really impact how your body is working lastly there is something called preconception testing so if you went to your OBGYN or you came to see me we would draw some tests before you get pregnant to make sure that we don't need to intervene to have a healthy pregnancy these typically include rubella and varicella titers making sure that you're immune to them both of these are viruses that cause birth defects and they can be devastating. So if you're not immune, you get a booster vaccine. You can't give those vaccines in pregnancy because the type of vaccine that they are. We also like to check your blood type to make sure you're not anemic, to check your thyroid, to check a vitamin D level, and to check that you don't carry any genetic diseases. I will tell you that some of the most devastating things I've seen include people who got pregnant, they didn't have infertility, and they lost a baby to a genetic disease that they had no idea that they were both carriers for. These are called silent carrier or autosomal recessive conditions. And when you carry them and they're passed down in the family, it can be really sad to have a baby that dies. These people will come to me to do IVF to try to find out which of their children will not inherit this mutation or which of their embryos. Therefore, we can transfer those to save them that heartbreak. It's a simple blood test to understand what you carry. And if you and your partner carry the same thing, then we go and intervene further. But ultimately, that's kind of the basics. So what preconception testing do we need? Take a prenatal vitamin, eat healthy and take care of yourself. Biggest thing though, right? understand your period, know how to time intercourse with ovulation or track your cycles, and then know that as long as you're getting the job done, you're doing the best you can. You should see a fertility doctor if your periods are irregular, if you're unable to have intercourse, if you've been trying for one year if you're under age 35, or if you're trying for six months if you're over age 35, or if you're 40 and you're just starting, you should probably see us first just to check everything. Hope this video gave you a little bit of background on what to do if you are wanting to get pregnant and just to set yourself off on the right pathway. We'll be answering some questions, so check it out. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and you can always follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD and check out the As Woman podcast on your favorite podcast player. Thanks friends. <laughs>